Hey friends, in this video, we will see how we can build a serverless function using serverless framework with MongoDB Atlas as a database. First, let us see what is serverless. Serverless is basically having your applications deployed without you having to worry about the infrastructure. You don't need to worry about the maintenance or scaling with the load. Serverless is very useful, especially when you are not aware about what would be the traffic or if there are infrequent traffics or sudden spikes in the traffics, etc. So in this video, we will use a framework called serverless, which allows you to build serverless APIs on different cloud providers. You can navigate to serverless.com and then look into the getting started page to get started. The easiest way to install serverless is using NPM. For NPM, you would either have to install node or NPM before you could issue this command. If you don't have those, you can definitely install serverless as a standalone lab library. Okay, so first let us go and install serverless. I already have serverless here, but still let us do that. You can do npm install hyphen g serverless. So this will install the serverless CLI in the global context so that it is available from anywhere okay so let's give us some time for this to get installed so serverless version 3 is the latest one as of now okay so while the serverless is being installed let us quickly go and have our database created okay so in order to have our database created, we will be using a MongoDB Atlas. So head on to cloud.mongodb.com. If you don't have an account, register for an account. You could use you could use either GitHub or Google as the identity provider. Once you have signed in, you will navigate to a page something like this. You need to create a project to get started. So let us create a project. We can name the project as YouTube serverless. Click on next and create project. Okay, so once the project is created, you can create a database. So click on build a database. Here you will see various options, serverless, dedicated and shared. This serverless plan is a new plan and it is very generous. It costs around 10 cents per million reads and so on. What we will do for this video is we will create a free shared plan. Though this is not serverless, but nothing changes. This is basically free. If you want, you could still go ahead and create a serverless plan or serverless instance here using this create button. Uh, you may need to provide credit card as needed. But for now, we will use the shared option. Nothing changes uh, whether you do this or do this. You will finally get a MongoDB URL that you need to configure in your application. Okay, so we will go ahead and select this free shared plan. So once you click on it, you will get an option to select the provider. You could either select from AWS, Google Cloud or Azure. So I have a AWS account, so I would go ahead with AWS. Uh, you need not have any account here. Uh, you could create it anywhere. Usually, it supports all the major hyperscalers that are available like Google Cloud and Azure. So I'll select AWS for now. So I'll select AWS 
Mumbai AP South. Uh, these are the cluster tiers, which is the shared plan. So M0 sandbox, additional, and you can give a cluster name. So I will give YouTube serverless. Click on create cluster. Okay, here you need to create your username and password. So for this example, I will give admin and pass one two three. Click on create user. So once you cre create the user, you need to also configure something known as the network access. So either you can allow only your current IP address to access or you could also allow to connect to this database from anywhere. So for now what we will do is either you can select here or you could go to the network access here. Click on add IP address and I will click allow access from anywhere. Click on confirm. Okay. So let us give a while for the cluster to get created it may take somewhere around uh, 3 to 5 minutes so if you, you can see here it's still deploying the changes okay so what we will do is while this is completely done as we can see it's done already we can go ahead and configure serverless framework before that let us just go and create a credential on AWS where our Lambda functions or the APIs will be deployed. So I go back to my AWS console here. I have logged in. You need to go to IAM. Click on users. Click add user. You need to give a name for your user. I will give serverless YouTube. We'll select programmatic access in the permissions what you can do is you can attach existing policies i would suggest you to give a granular access but for simplicity in this video i will give administrator access to this user okay and we go ahead and create user once you create the user you will get an access key id and secret access key these credentials we need to configure within our CLI. For that, let us go back to our command line and you could issue a command called serverless config credentials. If you look into this, you can supply provider key, secret and profile. So let us give this serverless config credentials hyphen hyphen provider the value is AWS hyphen hyphen key the key we need to take it from here we copy we paste it hyphen hyphen secret you can copy copy this key paste it here and you could also assign it to a profile so we will give profile as serverless hyphen mongo okay as you can see the profile serverless mongo has been configured you could also cross check this by going to the AWS uh, credentials okay you can you could check here and you see it has created the profile serverless mongo and the access key id and access secret key is configured great so so now we have the mongodb database we have our serverless user configured so now we will go ahead and create a serverless code. In order to do so, what we will do is
issue a command called serverless create so there are two ways serverless create and serverless also has a alias called sls which is a shorthand for serverless so you can issue a command serverless sls create or serverless create once you press enter it will ask you for a template okay so the other option is just give command serverless or sls and press enter here it will give you an option to select since we want to build a http api we select the option aws node js http api but there are various other options that you can select from give a name so i will give serverless mongo atlas press enter this will create our project from the template that we just selected click skip and here we go so what we can do is we can go and open this project in our visual studio code okay so as you can see here it has created a handler.js a readme and a serverless.yml file the serverless.yml file has a service which is the name the framework version we are using is 3 provider is aws runtime is node.js 14.x and it has the function that is defined now how this works is it says that we have a function hello okay and the implementation for this hello function is within the key that is handler so it says that the first part is the file name that is handler so you will see handler.js and this one is the exported function from this handler class so if you go to the handler you will see module dot exports hello so this hello is the one that is configured here okay so what we will do is we will go ahead and configure our serverless project okay so first thing what we will do is we will go ahead and create our folder structure so i usually prefer to hold all our handlers within a project so let us create src folder and within this we will create folders called handlers similarly i would want all my database related stuff within a database folder and since we will be using mongos for interacting with mongo we will create another folder which will hold all the models okay so this is the folder structure i usually prefer in addition to this if you are using middlewares you will have utils etc and you can create necessary folders to contain those files okay so what i will do for now is i will delete this handler.js okay and we will create our very first serverless function before we create let us go ahead and install the necessary libraries that we need for this project so first i will do an npm init y which will create the package.json okay next we will go ahead and install mongoose okay we will install a uh, serverless okay we'll install mongoose for now and we will have another package that we will be using which is called validator okay so let's install this validator we will use to validate our input like whether the field is actually having an email etc okay now since we have the libraries installed we will go ahead and create our first handler 
in order to create a handler let's create a file called let's say we want to build a user's api that is create user get all users get users etc so what we will do is we'll create create user dot js and within this we need to create our function okay so in order to create the function what we will do is we will export our function using module dot exports handler the handler is the one that we'll have to configure in our serverless.yml so let us go and do that let's say our function name is create user the file name is create user and the exported function is properties handler okay and this is within our src handlers folder okay we will go ahead and create our first api that is users and let's say this is a post method okay in addition to this we will configure few things within our provider let's say we are using 16.x version and under the runtime we could also specify memory size the minimum is 128 so we will use the minimum one for now this is something that you need to tweak based on your requirement but i believe for our need this should be more than enough region is ap south 1 that is what i want to use that is the mumbai region and i want to specify stage when we go ahead with the deployment so either this could come from the option that we passed within the serverless command if it's not there it could default it to dev okay great so once this is done since we have given users let us go ahead and fill this in so we need to export the handler this handler will take in event context and payload so we will just need event and context the arrow function and here we will have our method okay each of your method should return a json okay and that json should have a field called status code okay and it should have a body okay so let's say json dot stringify and we could have something like okay message hello okay we will change this okay but this is what every handler method should return okay this should be the format okay now since we want to interact with our database what we will do is we will create dot env okay and we will have a db property okay now here we need to give the connection uri for our mongodb database so for that let's go back to our mongodb cluster that we created few minutes back click on connect connect your application and we need to take in this uri and we need to paste it in our visual studio key element so let's replace this with the password that we gave that is pass one two three youtube serverless and at the end we can give a database name so let's give the database name as serverless okay now since we have the dot env with property db let us go back to our create user we need to have a connection to mongodb 
so for that we need to use the mongoose that we will use in this video okay in order to do so let us go back to the mongoose documentation and here we have a section which says how we need to set up our mongoose connection especially when using with lambda functions okay so we will do something like this so you see here we need to export a connect property and we need to have the connection created and also within our handler we need to have this context dot call back waits for empty event loop set to false okay so let's go and do this for this let's go back to our visual studio code under our database folder let's create db.js and within db.js let's bring in mongoose okay let's bring in mongoose let's define a connection object which will set to null and we will have a method okay so let's say module dot export equal to let's say our method name is connect database we'll create a arrow function and here if connection equal to equal to null we need to create a connection right so we'll just log it we'll say creating new connection to the database in order to do that i can await on mongoose dot connect we can use process dot env dot db from where we will get our uri and i can supply a configuration called server selection timeout which is 5000 so i'm basically giving a very less value so that it can figure out the server that needs to be connected and doesn't wait long to find that out so once this is done we'll return back connection if the connection is not null let us just log connection already established reusing the connection see what happens is basically when the first time the lambda is created a connection will be created but if there are subsequent calls that are made to the same api we would want to use the connection rather than creating new connections on every request okay so this is what we are trying to do okay so once we have this let us go and bring this in into our create user method okay so the first thing what we will do here is again bring in mongoose okay let's bring in our connect database from the db let's remove this out okay uh, as we saw we'll copy this and put it into our first line so what we will do next is let's connect to the database 
we can wrap this up within try catch await connect to database okay and then we can go ahead and do any operations that we want to do with the database so for that let's go ahead and create a model a user model okay so i'll create a file called user.js here again i'll bring in mongoose okay and i'll create a user schema which is new mongoose dot schema and within this we can define our fields that are needed so we'll keep it very simple let's say we have name the type is string we will trim the value and it is a required field so you could give required through and you could give some message if someone has not specified it so please add a name similarly we will have email type is string required is through unique is through and we will need to validate that it is actually a email that we are supplying so for that we will bring in the validator package that we installed some time back and from this validator we will use is email and provide entered email is invalid okay and the last field is password type is string required is through please set a password min length we will give 6 and set the password and we don't want this password to be returned when we are getting the user so we will set a field called select to false okay i believe we are all good here so we have user schema okay so what we will do is we will do a module dot exports equal to mongoose we need to create a model from this okay we will call it user this user will be the collection name and the schema is user schema great so we have this let us bring this user model into our create user okay so we will call it user require models dot user great okay now since this is the post method that is create user we will be passing certain things in the body like the name password email etc so in order to get those body parameters we need to pull that information from event dot body okay so what we will do is we will deconstruct so before that we just need to do a json dot parse because event dot body okay and from this body we will pick the three fields that will come through okay 
and if we can create a user object from this name email password okay now one thing is we don't want this password to be stored in plain text right so we will basically need to hash it out so for that we will install a package called bcrypt js okay and then we will hash the password that is coming in so either you can do it here but what we will do is we will do it at the schema side before saving something into the database so we will go to the user schema or the user.js here what we will do is we will use this user schema dot it has a method called pre so pre takes in various values like during delete one init many remove save so we want the password to be hashed during the save option and within this it takes a async function we cannot take and we cannot define an arrow function here because we will need an reference to this okay so we use a async function and within this what we do is we will do this dot password equal to we need to bring in bcrypt js so we will do bcrypt equal to require bcrypt js and then here we do bcrypt dot hash sync it takes in the string and the salt okay the string is this dot password and let's give the salt value as 10 and once it is done we call in the next function so this is similar to the middleware that we have within express etc okay now what this will do is before we save any user object it will hash the password and save it in the database okay so here now i could just do user object equal to await user dot create and pass in our user object okay we will return this as we saw status code is 201 since this is post call we are creating something and the body will be json dot stringify user object if there is an error we will just log in this error and we will return status code equal to error dot status code if it is not there we will default it to 500 and body json dot stringify error dot what we will do is we will have error as a field error dot message great okay so with this we have our method ready basically we are not using mongoose so we'll remove it from here okay great so let us just check so i have all the things wired up so since we are using dot env we will need to create we will need to install a plugin serverless 
plugin install okay so what we will do is npm install serverless.env plugin this serverless.env plugin we need to also define in our serverless.yml file so we will create a plugins which will take in the list and we will specify that plugin name there great so that this dot env is passed okay so believe we have everything here so let's test this out in order to test this we will install a plugin called serverless offline which will allow us to test this locally before we push or deploy it on our cloud provider that is aws in our case okay so for that we need to do serverless plugin install hyphen n serverless hyphen offline so this will download and install this serverless offline it will add it as a dev dependency in our package.json and at the same time it will also configure this plugin within our plugin section of in serverless.yml as you can see okay so now since we have this let us go ahead and issue a command called serverless offline if everything is good you should see something like this which says serverless from node modules dot env is loaded db property the stage used is dev and these are the function that is created so at the moment we just have one function that is users so we have it so let's test so either you can use any rest clients like postman insomnia etc i will be using the http client that is uh, available within vs code so i have already made a video previously which shows how to use it so you can look into that video which i will reference as a card on top and also mention it in the description so in order to do that i'll just create a file called api.http i will define a variable called host which will have the value that is localhost colon 3000 and i will specify my method that i need to test i need to test post i will use the host variable slash users the content type is application json and here i can specify my body name i will give john do email i'll give john do at the rate example.com and password i'll supply as password okay so let's click on send request and we have a problem okay so what does this say it says that create user is not a function okay so we need to figure out what is the problem here okay so the problem is we are using awaits right but we haven't specified a sync keyword so let's add that run serverless offline again 
and let us test the API by executing the send request. Great. So as you can see, it's creating a new connection to the database. It has also hashed the password. Perfect. If I run this again, it fails, which is great because we have put email as a unique field. But if you notice here, the second time it said connection already established, reusing the connection, which is great. So I can create a new one by just specifying a new email, executing send and it has created. We can also cross check. the database by going to browse collections the database name is serverless users and we see two documents one for John Doe and one for John Doe 11 perfect okay so we have our first API that is ready and which is working so what we will do is quickly create Two more APIs that is get all and get okay so for that let us go back to Visual Studio code okay in our serverless YML let us copy this let's paste it we'll call it get all get all dot handler get and similarly we will create another function called get user get user dot handler and this takes a path param let's say email okay and this is a get method great so what we will do is in the handler let's create get all dot user sorry get all dot js okay so we will take create user we'll copy it we'll paste it here so the first step is same connect database there is nothing in the body since this is a get we delete this instead of create we will use find okay so let us see what all is there we know that by that there is just one we'll use the find one method and this takes a filter so we will use oh this is get all right so i just need to do find okay and this is the user object we will get 200 and if there is any problem it is an error we will copy this we will create get user dot js we will paste it here we will get an email as part of the path param okay so what we need to do for that is let's deconstruct email from event dot path parameters okay so this email we will use within the find one method which takes a filter query and we pass this email okay so if user object is present I return with 200 if it is not I return 404 with the message error requested resource is not found in the database great so I have this all methods created here so let's go ahead and test this out. 
so we give serverless offline as we can see now it has three stuff post users and user email so let's go back to our api.http let's create other api in order to separate we give the three hashes get host slash users so this should give all the users so click on send and it gives two which is correct we have two documents let's test our get user by id sorry it is it was get users by email right so let's do user slash will provide the email address the email address was john do at the rate example dot com okay and let's send this request and we get the document if you can notice in the select cause that we made that is send request get all users and get particular user the password field is not returned this is because of the select property that we had specified in our schema in our schema we had the select as false so this password field will not be returned during the get or any select queries that we make okay so also let us just test uh, the invalid email for which we had the validate method so as you can see this email is incorrect it is not following the email format so if i do a send it gives us a method that entered email is invalid this is coming through the validate property that we have added on to our email field here great since now these things are working perfectly fine let us go ahead and deploy this to aws in order to do so we just do sls deploy we specify the aws profile which we had created earlier where we had supplied our credentials that is the access key id and access secret and we also specify the stage if we don't specify the stage it would default it to dev as we have mentioned it in our serverless yml file here if you see the line number 12 it says that if a stage property is given use that stage property if not default it to dev so the way how you can specify stage is using the stage argument in the deploy command press enter so what this will do is this will package our serverless function and it will upload to aws so what this does is it prepares and then it runs a cloud formation temper uh, it creates a cloud formation stack so as you can see it's creating a cloud formation stack and we can also cross check this by going to our aws console and looking into the cloud formation option and you can see it is creating serverless mongo atlas this was our service name hyphen the dev this is the stage name if we click on it under the resources we should see that it has first created a serverless bucket and there will be more resources that are created as part of this cloud formation stack like the lambda itself so it should basically create three lambda functions okay let us go back and as you can see it is updating the cloud formation stack so let us give few minutes for this to complete okay so the first time it might take time because it needs to zip it in and
create everything from scratch but later on let's say if you have only changed a certain function then you can only deploy that function itself in this case it is deploying the entire because we have not specified which function to deploy okay so we are almost there uh, it should take in a minute or so for this to complete now okay great so as you can see it has given us certain endpoints three endpoints are given so we can test this out from so before we test this out let us go back to our cloud formation stack it is complete and if we go back to services and search for lambda we should see three lambda functions created for us create user get all and get user all are using the node 16.x runtime as we have specified in this serverless yaml file okay so what we will do is let's go and test this out so we will take in this host name we will go to our api http method we'll just change it here okay and let's test okay so in order to test i'll click on send and it has failed which is correct because it is using the same database and we already have it okay so i can create a new user let's say durgadas and i say contact at the rate durgadas dot in i can send and it has created the record i can also test all my other methods users i am getting 3 so if i now create send request you see now it is pretty fast because the lambda is already warmed up so all the requests will be pretty fast let us check our last method that is by email the first time it will be slow as you can see because the function is warming up but all the subsequent request should be pretty fast as you can see here okay so with this we have all our three methods deployed onto aws using the serverless framework and we have also tested out the same the last thing what we could do is we could go inside this function and we could look look at the matrix so you can go to monitor click on you see here you will see all the recent invocations the invocations takes in time to come here uh, let's go to the cloud watch and see the logs okay so this is the log group and within this you can see there are various methods okay you will be you can expand it and see here this is the first time creating new okay it ended and you could see init duration this is the cold start which took around 600 milliseconds but all the further requests should be pretty fast you see connection already established it's reusing and you should see the duration which is very fast 35 milliseconds and you don't see this init option here right the init duration in this file because uh, there is no cold start because it was already warmed up and it was using the same function great so this is how you can also look at the logs you can go back to the uh, monitor options you should be able to see different matrix here what is the duration the success rate etc uh logs also should show in but this takes some time to show up now as you can see here you can see all the recent invocations the time taken the initially it was time it took lot of time but then it was pretty fast and we had set 128 mbs memory which is the minimum but it took almost around 97 to 99 mb of memory which is almost less than 100 the first call was pretty long 
but after that it should be pretty fast great the last thing is if you want to uh, just deploy a given method what you could do is you could give the same function sls deploy and you could supply the function name let's say create user so what will happen in this case is it will only deploy that given function we have not made any changes so it won't make much of a difference but in case you have a many methods and you just you have made changes to just one method and you want to only deploy that you can use the iphone f function and specify the function name and only those function will be deployed as you can see the configuration did not change so the update was skipped if you want to uninstall and remove all the resources that was created you could just give sls remove and specify the profile that is basically providing the credentials and this will remove all the objects that was created as part of the creation or the deployment process so here it will just delete the cloud formation stack which will delete all the resources that were created the same you can check out by going to the cloud formation stack and you should see the delete in progress okay as you can see the service has been successfully removed let's go back and refresh and all of those resources should be removed great so as you saw we used the serverless framework with mongodb atlas we defined and deployed three functions and also tested it using the http client plugin within vs code that's all i wanted to share in this video if you have not subscribed to my channel then please do so i will see you in the next video until then bye bye and keep learning